In today's lecture, I will be discussing about microwave spectroscopy or what is known as the rotational spectroscopy. Uh, when we talk about uh, microwave spectroscopy, the microwave region that will be extending, this is the range in terms of wavelength, wave number, frequency or energy. So when we talk about microwave spectra, it is uh, possessed by those molecules which are having permanent dipole moment. So uh, such molecules which are having permanent dipole moment as you can see here, it can uh, rotate and it generates an electric field that can interact with the electric field component of the microwave region radiations and during this interaction energy can be absorbed or emitted. So uh, this is the important condition uh, that is uh, those molecules which are microwave active they should have a permanent dipole moment. So these are the important conditions uh, that is the spectroscopy in microwave region that is mainly concerned with the study of rotating molecules. So such molecules they should have a permanent dipole moment like you can say HCl is there, CS3Cl is there uh, because uh, such molecules when rotate uh, they are just similar to fluctuating electric field of rotations. So interactions they can occur and energy can be absorbed or emitted and the rotation they give rise to spectrum. But if you see the uh, homonuclear molecules like N2O2, there will be no change in the dipole moment during the rotations. As a result, uh, they will be uh, microwave inactive. Uh, however, uh, my homonuclear molecules, uh, they can show a rotational Raman spectra that uh, is due to the polarizability of the molecule. So uh, this is an example of uh, a linear molecule that is HCl. So uh, you can see in HCl if you see the direction the oscillating dipole it can be provided by rotation of permanent dipole and this type of interaction it leads to microwave spectra. Now let us do the uh, classification of molecules. Uh, according to the relative value of their three principal moment of inertia uh, they are basically of three types that is uh, linear molecule, symmetric top molecule, spherical molecule and asymmetric molecule. Now when we talk about uh, moment of inertia uh, one thing we should know that when a molecule it is rotating it is performing angular momentum so that an angular momentum it will be given by i omega where i is the moment of inertia and omega will be the angular velocity. So when we talk about uh, moment of inertia, uh, we give it by a formula mr square. So moment of inertia is nothing but it is a property of matter that resists change in its motion or you can say the amount of torque which is required to rotate a body or accelerate the, bo uh, the body. So a uh, molecule can have three uh, principal moment of inertia. Uh, let us consider it as uh, Ia, Ib and Ic. So based on that, uh, we will be classifying it into four types. That is linear molecule, the symmetric top molecule, the spherical top molecule and asymmetric molecule. Now let us first talk about the linear molecule. Uh, so in these molecules, uh, uh, the atoms, they are arranged in a uh, linear fashion that is in a straight line as you can say HCl so you can see here uh, I am showing it by P and Q so this will be my principal axis which I am taking as Ia second axis I am taking as Ib and third one is Ic so when I am rotating it in this manner what is happening the atoms P and Q they are not changing their position so as a result uh, we can see that very uh, less energy is required for rotating such molecules so we can that is negligible energy is required so we can show it by zero so when you are rotating it by this axis uh, moment of inertia will be zero since P and Q they are not changing their positions 
now let us consider this as the axis of rotation now when you are rotating it by this axis what is happening p is moving here and q is moving here so both they are changing their position so comparatively more energy is required or when you are rotating it by this manner in this manner when you are rotating again p and q they are changing their positions so comparatively if you can say moment of inertia that is of this axis that is ib that will be almost equal to this axis when you are rotating because in both the cases p and q they are changing their positions while rotations so such molecules they are known as linear molecule uh, example can be hcl hcn even co2 so in linear molecule uh, you have seen three directions of rotation that is one is around the principal axis that is the bond axis second is uh, end over end rotation which is in the plane of the screen and next one is end over end rotation which is at right angles to the plane so uh, in this two rotations uh, the energy requirement is same so we will say ib is equal to ic and in third one since uh, both the atoms they are not changing their position so it can be considered negligible or you can take it as zero now let us talk about the symmetric top molecule in that we are considering for example methyl fluoride in which three hydrogen atoms they are bonded tetrahedrally to the carbon and fourth one is the fluorine uh, moment of inertia along CF uh, that will be our principal axis IA uh, some energy is required for that moment so we will say moment of inertia in this case will not be equal to zero uh, because it is involving rotations of uh, hydrogen three massive hydrogen of its axis uh, while uh, the rotation along IB and IC axis uh, it will be almost same since uh, all the atoms they are changing their position so similar amount of energy will be required now let us discuss about the spherical top molecules in such molecules the uh, molecule it has all the three moment of inertia identical because uh, all the substituents they are same so whatever force you are applying from whichever axis that will be identical that is ia will be equal to ib is equal to ic as you can see in methane so from whichever axis you are rotating uh, hydrogen it is going to change its position <clears throat> so equal energy will be required um, uh, the spherical top molecule it does not possess permanent dipole moment so they don't give rotational spectra and uh, we say they are microwave inactive now let us talk about asymmetric top molecules uh, in which uh, uh, three moment of inertia they will be different uh, example is uh, water so from all the three axes when you are applying force uh, different force will be required to rotate the molecule or vinyl chloride also that is also asymmetric top molecule now let us consider a rigid rotor and uh, which is a diatomic polar molecule as you can see in the diagram uh, since it is a diatomic atomic molecule it is having two masses m1 and m2 and uh, they are separated by internuclear distance r0 uh, let uh, r1 and r2 be the distance of these atoms from center of gravity so uh, here c uh, is given to show you the center of gravity now the moment of inertia of the particle of mass m which is uh, revolving around a fixed point at a distance r that is given by mr square so for a system which is having two masses that moment of inertia will be given by m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square so we are considering a diatomic molecule which is having masses m1 and m2 this is the distance between them that is r0 such that r0 is equal to r1 plus r2 and uh, from this is the center of gravity now from center of gravity m1 r1 will be equal to m2 r2 but uh, if the uh, moment of inertia if you consider that will be for the two masses that will be m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square so i am writing it twice m1 r1 
R1 and M2 also M2 R2 R2 but I know M1 R1 that is equal to M2 R2 so I am replacing it M2 R2 similarly M2 R2 I am replacing by M1 R1 now here you can see R2 R1 that is common this part is common in both so that I will be taking outside so I will be equal to R2 R1 M2 plus N1 so this will be my first equation now what I have to do is I have to find out the value of R2 and R1 and then I will be inserting it here so uh, I will be finding out that what is R2 and R1 so how I am going to find it now at center of gravity as you know M1 R1 is equal to M2 R2 or you can say M1 R1 is equal to instead of R2 I can write R0 minus R1 since you know that R0 is equal to R1 plus R2 so now I will open the bracket what I will get is M1 R1 is equal to M2 R0 minus M2 R1 this part I will be taking this side so it will be M1 R1 plus M2 R1 is equal to M2 R0 now R1 is common here so R1 that will be equal to M1 plus M2 that is equal to M2 R0 so from here you can find out the value of R1 that is M2 R0 upon M1 plus M2 so this will be my second equation similarly I will be finding out the value of R1 by using same equation again now M1 will be equal to R1 I can replace by R0 by R2 that is equal to M2 R2 so uh, open the bracket that will be equal to M2 R2 so M1 R0 is equal to take this this side M2 R2 plus M1 R2 or you can write M1 R0 is equal to R2 is common so take R2 common you will get M2 plus M1 so from this you can find out the value of R2 that will be equal to M1 R0 upon M2 plus M1 so this will be my equation number 3 now I am having the value of R2 and R1 that will I, I will be substituting in equation number 1 I am writing the equation 1 again that will be equal to R2 R1 M2 plus M1 or M1 plus M2 you can write so R2 that is M1 R0 upon M2 plus M1 and R1 is M2 R0 m2 plus m1 m2 plus m1 so this was, will get cancelled i am left with m1 m2 r0 square upon m2 plus m1 so i i am getting this so i will be equal to now this part you will be replacing by mu that is nothing but the reduced mass now as we know that the kinetic energy of the rotation that is given by this equation that is uh, h square upon 8 pi square i j square now energy is related to this equation that is h mu or hc upon lambda now this will be hc and 1 upon lambda will be this wave number so hc wave number that will be equal to h square upon 8 pi square i j j plus 1 if uh, subsequent uh, uh, energy levels you are taking 
where j can be 0 1 2 and so on now this hc part you will be taking in the denominator and 1h will get cancelled so final wave number you will be getting h upon 8 pi square ic j j plus 1 or you can write it as b j j plus 1 now this is a constant which is given by b and uh, that is known as the rotational constant so hence you got this equation b j j plus 1 so this is the final equation and now based on that you will get the rotational spectra uh, for j is equal to 0 the rotational energy is zero so molecule is not rotating for j is equal to 1 the rotational energy will be 2b for this and um, a rotating molecule will have its uh, lowest angular momentum at this case so uh, there will be a gap of 2b that is from one transition to another that is 2b 4b 6b 8b 10b and so on So you can see uh, that is to raise the molecule to J1 state energy uh, which is absorbed that will be 2B. To raise it from J1 to J2 the energy absorbed will be 4B and so on. Now let us talk about the effect of isotopic uh, substitution on the trans, uh, transition frequencies. Uh, the presence of isotope in a molecule it brings about a considerable effect on the reduced mass of the molecule. Now if you know when the reduced mass changes there will be change in the rotational constant B because uh, B is responsible for the separation frequencies separa uh, separation of the frequency lines so molecule having different isotopes of same element they will show different reduced mass and hence they will show different frequencies uh, so frequency of lighter species will be larger than the heavier one now this was explained by Mulliken uh, he just uh, gave the relationship he explained it by this relationship that is the rotational constant b it is given by h upon 8 pi square ic so i it is inverse to b so he considered two isotopes a and b which are having moment of inertia i a and i b now the value of rotational constant that is given by b a is equal to h upon 8 pi square i a c so for b b it will be h upon 8 pi square i b c so taking the ratio of this two that will give you ib upon ia now i that is the moment of inertia that is given by mu r square so for ib it will be mu b r square for ia it will be mu a r square so if you cancel the r uh, what is left is b a b b is equal to mu b mu a this shows that the rotational constant it is uh, inverse of the reduced mass So you can see here we have, we have taken carbon monoxide, uh, carbon 12 and carbon 13. So the vibrational frequency of the lighter isotope, um, it will be larger than the heavier one.